Okay, so what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, I want to talk to you about the Umidigi A13 Pro. That is this really nice Android phone that's in my hand right now. And in this video, I'm pretty much going to tell you all my thoughts about this device, who I think this device is for. And at the end of this video, I'm going to be giving away this phone in the comment section. So let's get into it. The kind of guns. So first things first, the unboxing experience. This phone comes in this really nice looking yellow box. It's quite conspicuous. And in the box, you basically get the phone already installed with the TPU rubber casing. When you remove that, you're basically going to get some paperwork, which is going to contain a SIM ejector tool and a manual and stuff like that, warranty card. And below that, you're going to get the power brick for this device that's to charge it. And you're going to get a cable. It's a red and black USB-A to USB-C cable, which is actually a really nice touch. And we're going to talk about that later on in the video. Moving away from the unboxing experience, let's actually talk about the design for this phone. On the back of the phone and on the front, actually, it has this rubber sticker stuck to it that pretty much tells you details and information about the phone i already removed the one on the front because you know i was going to use and review the phone but i left the one on the back uh, that one pretty much tells you which buttons are the volume button which one is the power button which also contains the fingerprint sensor and a customizable button on the other side on the other side is also where you're going to get your sim card slot which can take one SD card and one SIM card or two SIM cards, depending on what you need. This phone on the back looks like an elongated iPhone 12, which is not necessarily a bad thing, I think. It looks nice and for weight, it's around 225 grams, which is also not bad. It's got some heft to it, so it's a decently weighted phone. Um, size wise, I find that one hand operation can be problematic sometimes, but it works fine. My unit is actually the blue color. I believe this comes in three colors. So for the most part, design wise, this is nice. At the bottom, you get a single speaker that's firing down and you also get the USB-C port and a microphone at the top and the bottom. You also get an headphone jack, which is not something you get in phones these days anymore. And I appreciate that. Now this phone is supposed to be metal and glass, but for some reason, it feels a lot more like some metal and mostly plastic. I mean, it does sound like plastic, but it does feel very well built. So I don't think you're going to have any problems with the build quality. Now, moving away from the physical bits of the design, let's actually talk about the software. So this phone is running Android 11, which isn't a bad thing necessarily. Android 11 is kind of dated at this point, but it still works fine. But the first thing I noticed when I turned this on was that the operating system or the, so yeah, the OS that this was running, the skin that this was running on Android was really ugly. It felt like a phone from 2008 or something. So the first thing I did was I installed Nova Launcher. I installed some, you know, icon packs that I already bought on Android long ago, and I made the phone look better. It was just necessary for me to be able to have a better experience with reviewing this phone. But beyond that, I noticed that the fingerprint sensor was very, very responsive. I barely touched it before it unlocked, as you can probably hear from the audio right now. It's really, really fast. I like the fact that the screen is so long. I like the fact that the phone is like four cornered on the edges and stuff. I like the way it feels in my hand and it's pretty much premium filling Android device for a budget price like this. Now, speaking of the performance for this phone, it has a Unisoc T610 processor and a Mali G52. Also, my unit, I believe, comes with 4GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage. Now, there is versions of this phone that have 6GB of RAM, so I guess that's great, but ultimately, my unit had only 4GB, which was actually more than enough for everything I would do with a phone. I'm not the kind of person who plays video games with my phone, so I don't really care about the extra RAM, as long as my phone doesn't slow down when I'm trying to open applications reply emails, tweet, use Instagram, things like that. I have absolutely no problems with it. So that was actually plenty enough for me. Now the display on this is a 6.7 inch 720 by 1650 pixels. Now that may not sound bad, but I think the display is probably where this phone let itself down the most. I mean, when you have like a steel wallpaper and you're just looking at the screen like this, it looks fine. In fact, it looks wonderful, I could say. Brightness on the display is actually not bad. It's all the way up right now when I have auto brightness, probably because of the lights in the studio. And it looks fantastic. But where this display starts to give me problems or started to give me problems was when I was trying to scroll. Now, 
One of my favorite things about an Android OS is going to have to be the Google News tab on the left. It's customized to you and it pretty much tells you news about stuff that you are interested in. So I usually like to scroll through that, decide what I want to read and then just read that. And what I noticed was using that was pretty annoying. Like at some point I started to get a headache. Like it's happening right now again like it starts to give you a headache because the refresh rate on the screen seems so low now this is supposed to be a 60 hertz refresh rate phone but it feels more like a 42 hertz refresh rate like it's bad like there's a visible lag when you actually try to scroll on this phone i don't know if things are different on the six gigabyte version of this phone but it's just really bad with the screen and the fact that it makes you feel like you're at sea and it just messes with your head. I don't like that very much at all. Now with a 269 pixels per inch density, I don't think it's bad. I think it's fine for a budget phone that's coming in at around $150. So no complaints there. I think for me, the other parts of this phone that was a huge letdown was probably the camera setup. It's got a triple camera array on the back and it's got a single camera on the front. On the back, the main shooter is a 48 megapixel F1.8, I believe. and the second one is an ultra wide 8 megapixel and then you have a 5 megapixel uh i don't know what you call it now macro lens this is the one where people move close to flowers and snap the buds and stuff i'm not sure why we need that but android phones seem to think that's important this day so they include it on almost every phone and all three of the cameras on the back are useless like you can't take a decent photo no matter the lighting condition no matter how many professional lights like we could try to take a photo right now and you see it on the screen just how bad this is like it's it's horrible like this is a studio where i have professional thousand dollar lights lighting me all over the place and i can't capture why does it even take so long to capture like it's it's visibly bad it's audibly bad it's just bad you cannot get a decent photo out of this camera sensors no matter how hard you try no matter if you're using it in the sun or you're using it indoors no matter where you're trying to take the photo from it's just a bad camera setup like it's bad i, I don't want to continue talking about this so it doesn't feel like i'm shitting on this phone boy it's bad on the front you have a 16 megapixel sensor and the photos that come out of that are just as bad like i'm gonna take a selfie now and put it in a video so you can see but it's really bad like <laughs> i'm not sure how else to try and make this phone better with photos but it's horrible now this phone shoots 1080p video on the front and on the back and try to record with this regardless of the quality of the lighting that i have like i said before the video should not be this bad like it's really bad i simply can't get a decent video out of this phone i'm not sure why but that's the situation it's a really really bad camera array and i i honestly feel like i should just stop talking about this so i don't continue to cheat on this phone now speaking of the battery life on this phone it's got a 51 50 milliamps per hour battery and i think that's probably my favorite part of this phone the battery life lasts very long like i was using this phone to netflix even though it was really uncomfortable because of the single bottom firing speaker it was really teeny like if i was in a room where another device was playing something like my ipad or my iphone i can't hear what this phone is saying if i'm trying to play media with this phone i cannot audibly hear what the phone is trying to tell me so if i wanted to netflix with this so i wanted to i have to use the headphone jack or use bluetooth earbuds or just make sure i'm in a quiet room to be able to have a better experience with this device which is very very disappointing but ultimately the battery life itself is actually pretty outstanding 5150 was about two days of use for me probably because i wasn't daily driving this phone as my main device it was basically a second device that i was testing so ultimately it was fine for the most part and I guess maybe if you're somebody who actually plays video games with your phone and you do every tasks and stuff, and this is like your main device, it's probably not going to last that long. And you're probably going to have a harder time keeping the phone cool like I did. But me personally, the only game I ever play on my phone is chess and maybe block Doku sometimes. These are like whole people games. So I had no problems running this phone. It never got hot. And speaking about the charging, the charging brick and cable in the box are very good looking very simple to use and straightforward the only gripe is it's not a fast charge so there's no fast charge present it took me a little over two hours to actually get this phone to charge from around 10 percent to full so 
you have to keep that in mind when you're actually buying this phone and there's no actual fast charge present for the phone so if you actually already have a USB-C fast charger it's not going to charge this phone at speed so let's actually talk about my final thoughts and opinions about this phone now for 150 dollars i feel like this is too expensive for what it is and i know 150 dollars is already a very budget price but when i think about the fact that there are companies like xiaomi who are making phones for 130 dollars and they're a lot better than this like i would have i would feel more comfortable recommending a 120 dollars xiaomi phone than recommending this which is more expensive then that tells you something right as much as this is a very decent budget offering I don't think it's for me or for people like me. I feel like if you're somebody who is getting into your first smartphone or maybe you're trying to buy a smartphone for your elderly dad, like a really elderly dad or a grandpa or a grandma, this would be fantastic for them because all the things that younger people do with their phones, they're really not going to care about that stuff. They're fine with the quality of the photo. They're fine with the screen lag when they're trying to scroll. They're probably not scrolling that fast anyway. They're probably using Facebook and scrolling really slow. So I feel like this phone is for grandmas or for kids under the age of 13 who just need a true away phone to play video games with. But the catch with that is you're not going to be able to run really every tasks or video games with this phone. You're not going to edit your videos with this phone. You're not going to try and do 4K editing for whatever reason on this phone. You're not going to be playing Asphalt. You're not going to be playing FIFA 22 or anything like that on this phone. That's not what this phone is made for. And if you try to do that with it, you're going to disappoint yourself. One final thought about this phone is it actually makes me feel bad for cheating on Techno and Infinix phones all those many years ago, mostly because I remember those phones weren't this bad and I really, really had a problem with it. So I'm sure after so many reviews about this phone, the price is probably going to drop, I believe. Aside the fact that it's selling for $150 right now, in Nigeria, this phone is selling for somewhere between 80,000 Naira and 83,000 Naira. I'm not sure, you know, it varies pretty much when you find it online. I have seen it somewhere for around 77,000 Naira. I feel like if it was lower than that, this would probably be an easy phone to recommend, but at the current price, it's not a phone that I would recommend to anyone ever for any reason whatsoever. So speaking about giving this phone away, as much as I enjoyed my time with this phone, I still have to say that it's not a great phone and I don't want to keep it, but I understand but I understand that I might be speaking from a position or a point of privilege is why I don't like this phone. And I know there's going to be other people out there who probably would love an opportunity to use this phone either as a main device or maybe even other YouTube video makers who just want to review this device. So I'd like to pass this on and pay it forward. So if you're interested in this phone and you want this phone, just leave a comment in the comment section below telling me what your favorite thing about this phone is and in exactly 10 days i am going to pick one random comment well not random actually the comment with the most upvotes gets this phone so essentially after you leave your comment tell your friends to come and upvote your comment send them a link to your comment and ask them to upvote your comment so whatever comment has the most upvotes at the end of two weeks is essentially going to get this phone and that's pretty much it so that was pretty much my review of the Umiji G813 Pro. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I guess I will see you on another video that was shot by Kagan. Peace. The kind of gods.